obviously coach Ed Foley, um, head coach at Union Endicott, now assistant coach at Binghamton University, yeah. longtime player UE Springfield College. So coach will start, you know, probably, maybe it's hard to remember at this point, but <laughs> When was your first time, like when did you first realize baseball was kind of, maybe you were oh. early on in life? So early that uh, my dad, in our backyard, I mean I was seven, eight years old, you know, I, my father loved baseball, he grew up in the shadows of Yankee Stadium, he was a huge Joe DiMaggio fan and so I think he instilled that love of baseball in me, um, so I've always had a a strong passion for the game. I can remember sitting on my, the steps in my house on June Street in Endicott, glove in hand, looking down the road to see uh, my dad coming home from work so that we could go in the backyard and I could pitch to him. A thousand percent, and we spoke a couple months ago about the triplets. Yeah. Um, you know, how much of that, did, how much of that having a, a team here, a, such a successful, team here, a minor league team here, how much did that really affect your early on love for the game? Yeah, um, quite a bit. My dad, like I said, being a Yankee fan and the trips were, for the most part, they were a Yankee farm club. So we made our trips to uh, Johnson Field and, and uh, watched those games and saw those uh, guys that a lot of them made it to Yankee Stadium. And then for me, uh, later on in my, my career as a player growing up and playing high school and uh, later American Legion Baseball, we had some games there that I was able to play in, and that was quite a thrill. Absolutely, and, and you mentioned kind of your high school career. Um, once you got to that point, once you started, you know, really playing for Union kind of yeah. High School, how did you feel like your game kind of developed uh, as a pitcher and, and obviously outfielder? I, I owe all of it to my dad, um, yeah. He was the guy that nurtured me, and I was not a big guy, but uh, he always uh, was encouraging and said, you don't have to be big to be good in this game. And so, uh, you know, the pitching part came easy for me. Um, and I had a mentor, uh, Pete Sylvester, who was the former head coach at UE. I never played for him. Uh, there was another gentleman who was the head coach, but Pete was a JV coach then. And uh, he was a Springfield College grad, and he knew that I wanted to teach, and coach and uh, he thought it would be a great place for me and as it turned out it was. It was really good. You mentioned that your years really early on it was a lot of your dad. Yeah. Um, obviously now you're coaching with your sons. So, yeah. So what's that like and, and you know what's it like being able to be on the bench with you in the dump? I, I never envisioned it. Um, when my son was um, through with the minor league uh, deal that he you know played uh, he went into the food business, and he was a broker, and was doing quite well. Um, but he came to me one day and says, I, don't, I hate what I'm doing. I just don't like it. The money's great, but I, I miss baseball. I want to coach. And it just so happened that the timing was right. There was an opening at BU, and Coach Sinicki was brought him on. And so now I've had, like, I don't know, six or seven years sharing a dugout with my son, and I... I'm so proud of him. I think he's going to be a really good one. He connects with the kids. He knows the game, and he loves it. And if you don't love it, it's hard to be good at it. For sure. And then you mentioned going to Springfield College, playing there, and then afterwards, you know, we're skipping some time, but obviously becoming a coach. How did that journey from player to coach transition? What was that transition like for you? Uh, it, was, it was an easy transition because I never wanted to take the uniform off. That's... <laughs> That, that, that is, and, and I look at myself more as a caretaker of the game than I do as a coach. Uh, I just have always wanted to pass on to kids my love of baseball, and I've had wonderful teachers of the game, and that's what I wanted to be, and make sure that that uh, transcended to the, the, the young kids in Broome County. Um, Lou Ferraro, as I mentioned at the induction, it's crazy, he brought me to Binghamton. I was at UE as a volunteer, and. Then Lou, Lou said, come, come to Binghamton and be my JV coach. And those first three years at Binghamton were some of the best years of my life in coaching. I, can, I remember those kids at Binghamton vividly, vividly, by name, all these years later. And uh, so then, you know, I, from there, when the, when the schools combined, 
I, I lost that position, and I ended up at Johnson C for a year, which is where I met Tim Sinicki. He was my star shortstop and pitcher, <laughs> and uh, he was a good one. And, and we formed a, a, a lifetime relationship, and look where it's got me. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and thanks I, to him. Right, yeah, absolutely. And he's still coaching now, doesn't say anything to it. But after Johnson City, obviously you get the call. To back make, to UE. Yeah, back to UE. As a JV coach. As a JV coach. Yes. Talking about that. Yeah, so I, I spent seven years under, uh, under uh, Pete Sylvester, who was a tremendously successful coach at UE, kind of put us on the map. He really did. Uh, all the sectional titles that he won and stack championships, and I was his GV guy for seven years. So, uh, when you talk about uh, when you talk about getting ready, if you will, I had 11 years total as a JV coach, and you know you, when you're 22 years old and you have your first job, you think you're ready. You know everything. <laughs> Turns out I didn't, I didn't know a heck of a lot. And even when I took over the varsity at UE, you know, I, I didn't know all there was to know about coaching the game. It took time. And I still don't know all. But there, there was 11 years before I became the head coach at UE. Yeah. And what was that passing of the torch like from Coach Sylvester to yourself? I think it was, um, it was smooth. Because we had worked so closely together for seven years. We mapped out practices together. Um, you know, our teams in, in the wintertime, especially in the gym, when you first start in March, you, you have to work together. Uh, so that was an easy one. The, the most difficult part for me was uh, seeing him go. I, I hated to see him go. And I wanted him to stay on. Again, I didn't understand. I said, stay on and be my assistant, you know? He's like, no, that won't work. He said, this is your time. This is your time. And uh, I didn't understand it then, but I totally understand it now. Totally. Absolutely. And, and I guess he was right. It was your time. <laughs> you know, eight, eight sectional championships, a handful of uh, stack championships, and obviously two New York State championships. Yeah. So early on, as a head coach, you mentioned you didn't know everything. but, but oh, still what, don't. You still don't, right. But at what point did you realize, like, okay, I'm built for this. This is something I'm, I'm very, very capable of doing and obviously did at a very high level for a long time. Well, I, I think uh, outcomes. Uh, we were winning. We were a program that many thought were or was maybe the benchmark baseball program in the area at the time for a, a quite a you know quite a run, uh, and um, you know the kids are your greatest. Uh, you know the induction into the Hall of Fame is not something that I ever strived for as a coach. Never even crossed my mind. But what you, what the feedback that you, you get from kids that played for you, that tells you everything you need to know. As a teacher as well, it was very important for me. I'm a teacher first and a coach second. And to have kids that graduated and said, I loved being in your class, I loved being in your class, that means everything. And the same thing held true with the, the coaching part. How do you know you're, you're getting the job done and you're doing it the right way? Uh, the kids that graduate will let you know, and they did, and they still do. Absolutely, so. and, and you know, obviously, early on, I guess, talk to me about that first state championship you, you oh. guys obviously won one, two, but the first one, I mean, what was working right, what was the expectations like at the beginning of the season, and, and guys, how did the season transpire? That was the goal from the onset. From day one, you know, UE's had tremendous teams under Pete Sylvester, and they could never quite finish it off. And they, believe me, they had teams that were capable of doing that. And so uh, our guys wanted that 2001 team, they, they wanted to be the first. That, that was, uh, th they were driven all year to that. Practices were easy. You know, they, they had a goal. And so uh, when we finally were able to pull that thing off and, and, and win it, and we had so much support from past teams, incredible. Um, yeah, it was. It, it would all. It'll always be very special, you know, for me. My brother was uh, dying of uh, cancer at the time, and uh, we played McQuaid High School for the, for the championship game, and he couldn't come to the game. He was bedridden, and the uh, the coach, unfortunately, for Rochester McQuaid at the time, he also was terminally ill. His players uh, basically um, they almost carried him into the dugout. 
So I'm seeing him, I'm thinking of my brother, uh, and yet we're trying to accomplish this feat that no other great UE team could ever uh, accomplish. And when it finally we got that final out, oh, geez, a lot of emotions, for sure. Absolutely. Interestingly, I, I went to McQuaid, actually. So oh, did you? Yeah, I went to McQuaid. That's funny. That, wow. that happens. They're a heck of a school, and obviously their, their uh, history of athletics there is quite long. The baseball team is yeah. crazy. But you mentioned a lot of emotions. So yeah. were you able to, after winning, share that moment with your brother a couple yes. of years? Yes. Uh, what was that like? Tough. Tough. Absolutely. And then, obviously, to come back a handful of years later and, and kind of, I guess, you know, reinvent that team, reinvent the union. The yeah, uh, those, those kids, um, there was one young man that was on both teams. I hope I got that right. Ian, Ian Christie was a sophomore. I'm, I wonder if uh, Eric Mahelk was, too. I can see my, my memory is not too good. I know Ian was. Yeah. He played uh, third base on, as a sophomore on the 2001 team, and then he was uh, a pitcher third baseman on the, on the 03 team. And those kids were JV players, and, and uh, including my two oldest sons, EJ and Mike, were both uh, on that 2003 team. So, you know, the first one you win with your brother uh, looking over your shoulder, so to speak, and then the second one you win, you have... You have two boys on the team that were key players, and uh, that was pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, you mentioned. I mean, we, we talked about it a little bit, but you said obviously your your dad helped you by yeah. like growing up. So to win it with your oh, sons, I mean, that yeah. has to be per like perfect, right? Yeah, I think that's a pretty good way to describe it. It was uh, it was special. Um, you know, you, your emotions take you to the backyard wiffle ball games and. Uh, I had a batting cage in the backyard as the kids got older, and we had not only my two boys, but we had the whole neighborhood and kids from everywhere would come and take swings back there. And then you see this this state championship team and them be a part of it, along with me in the dugout. Wow, I mean, that's it's kind of like storybook, you know, in a way. And not everybody gets to not only win a state championship in any sport, it's very difficult to do, but to do it with your kids, it's, it's overwhelming. Absolutely, and then what was it, 2008, when you stepped away from Union and kind of went to I, I think it was 2006, yeah. after the sixth season. I think that was my last season. So at what point did you decide that was, it was time to step away? Well, they asked me to stay on. Um, the, the superintendent of school said, you, you can coach here as long as you want. But I really felt that, uh, you know, back when Pete Sylvester said to me, this is your time, I felt very strongly that a lot of the success that I was able to have in the program was due to the fact that I was in the building every day. I, I could keep a, you know, an eye on my players. I knew the heartbeat of all the guys, what they were, if they had a fight with their girlfriend, if they were in trouble with a teacher, I knew. And I think that helped me. Um, I didn't want to be a guy, and, and, I'm, and I don't say this because other people are doing it wrong. Everyone has to have their own agenda. I, I didn't feel for me that to show up at 3 o'clock and just coach was the right thing to do as the head of the program. So I said, no, I'm, I'm going to step away. And um, Even though baseball you know, was still in my blood and I love it, and then I got lucky, and a day or, a day or two after the announcement was made that I was uh, retiring, then I get this call from Tim, and I was like, wow. So I said, he goes, what do you want to do? I said, I, 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 I want to accept your offer before you change your mind. <laughs> so, so yeah, and I thought, I really thought that um, four or five years at BU would be great. I could ride off into the sunset, um, and here I am about to enter my 17th or 18th year with them, whatever. For sure, and, and we'll get to we'll get to the big answer in a minute. I'll ask uh, two more questions about you real quick. Sure. The first one is is obviously the winningest coach in in UE program history. Do you remember the game that gave you that mark? I don't. No. Okay. I really don't. Honestly, I I don't. And again, in that that I, the part about that I remember was 
you know, it was a little bittersweet because of my affection for Pete Sylvester. But I don't remember the game, no. Gotcha. And then the last thing I'll ask you about UE is, is obviously a lot of um, people in the area obviously you, you coached and helped Jim Johnson um, <laughs> along the way. So what was that? The like? I, seeing him in the majors, I mean, I could have to imagine that. One. Yeah, the, the best, uh, <laughs> the best thing I did with Jim Johnson was leave him alone. <laughs> every, every once a week, he took the mound, and I was the best coach in the state of New York on that day. I mean, that kid was unbelievable. You know, he threw in the low 90s in high school. Um, he has God's gift, and then for me to be able to go to Baltimore. Well, my wife and I used to. Uh, Believe it or not, we used to uh, schedule our summer vacations around where Jim was pitching in the country. So I don't know, my kids and most kids would go to the beach. We'd go to the ballpark in uh, Delmarva, you know, uh, in Tidewater, wherever he was. And Jim and I have an extremely close relationship. Uh, in fact, I talked to him last night on the phone. He's coaching high school down in Florida. And his son's team just won their district uh, little league title, so they're moving on in the state tournament for Florida. And uh, again, going to watch Jim pitch in the big leagues, and 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 him inviting my wife and I and covering us financially to go to watch him in the All Star game in Kansas City, incredible, incredible moment. Yeah. And, and now going to Binghamton University, obviously, you know, eight section titles with UE. Two yeah. state titles and stack titles, yeah. and now since since what 2006, it's been what four America East titles. I think, I I think maybe five. Maybe I five, think five yeah. American East championships and various. Uh, you know, they split it up there because you can have a regular, regular season and then you can have the postseason. So we've we've had our fair share of success. Uh, it's not me. There's there's four of us that uh, coach there and. Um, very satisfying to see Tim uh, win like this. He's a heck of a coach. Uh, Ryan Herba and my son Mike, these guys put in countless hours recruiting and, and working with kids, not just during the uh, specific, specific uh, practice times, but they get kids in there one-on-one. -on -one. They're, they're constantly uh, trying to strive to make us better and We've had some great athletes that I've gotten close to, and uh, it, when the day comes that I have to step aside from there, and it's probably close, it'll be very difficult to do. Very difficult. It's hard. You saw, you were at the games. You know, when we lose or win, the emotions are the same. There's a lot of tears winning and a lot of tears losing because for some of those kids, it's the last time they'll ever play, and uh, they mean a lot to me. Those guys. Definitely, absolutely. And last question on that. Is, sure. You've done a lot of winning in your career. Does it ever get old? No. <laughs> nope, not at all. Um, you play to win. I don't care if you're in your backyard. You know, they can, they can do things like, well, we won't keep score. Well, believe me, somebody's keeping score. Uh, they are. You can, in, when my kids were little in the backyard, we didn't have a scoreboard. We had lights. We didn't have a scoreboard, and they know who they knew who won. So yeah, winning is what you play for. It's what we're all about. Um, so no, it doesn't get old, and I love it. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I appreciate absolutely. it. I'll take this from sure. Here quick.